We joined in the library of RUSI by Dr. Amanda Sloat, the Deputy Assistant Secretary in the State Department in Washington, the person responsible for America's relations with the Eastern Mediterranean nations, Greece, Cyprus, Turkey, but also you're the person responsible for coordinating with Europe activities and policies towards the Middle East and North Africa. Amanda, in your discussions in London, you express some cautious optimism about the situation in Cyprus. Of course, a conflict of over half a century in which it ebbed and flows. We had at various times, various proposals. What makes you think that this time we may be approaching a peaceful solution? I, thank you very much for, for having me. I think, as, as you said, we are quite cautiously optimistic. Secretary Kerry said in Davos a couple weeks ago that this is the best chance we've had in, in decades for a settlement. I think there is a lot of factors that are coming together to, to, to make now a propitious time to, to hopefully have an agreement. Uh, one of the most positive and important things is we have pro-settlement leaders on both sides of the island in President Anastasiadis and in the Turkish Cypriot leader Akinji. Um, I think with the economic situation, with the discovery of, of energy resources off the, the coast of Cyprus, people are seeing good economic reasons um, to, to, to move ahead with the settlement. I think given the larger geopolitical situation with everything that's happening in the Middle East, everybody recognizes that now would be a very positive time to, to have one conflict solved within the, the European Eastern Mediterranean space and would enable Cyprus to continue serving as a, a bulwark for security in the region. It's interesting because it's counterintuitive. Everyone talks about the region you're responsible for as mayhem, as a region of disaster, one war after another, tensions. And yet you're able to sort of run a parallel bit of optimism. Do you think that Washington and the European capitals have the necessary diplomatic bandwidth to carry through with these efforts when you've got literally burning questions such as Syria? I, it's it's a, a fair question, and there's certainly lots of conflicts on which I uh, spend most of my time. But I think you can see that there is very high-level interest in the Obama administration and what's happening in, in Cyprus. Um, Secretary Kerry was in Cyprus a couple of months ago. Vice President Biden was there a year and a half ago. Um, both of them were engaging with, with leaders at, at Davos. Um, Secretary Kerry engaging with the leaders at the UNGA meetings in, in September. And so I think despite everything that's, that's happening in and attracting attention in, in other parts of the region, there is still a recognition that we have a very real opportunity in, in Cyprus, and I think there is a desire and a commitment by senior officials in the administration to do everything we can to support efforts to get this done. Let me turn perhaps to Turkey, which you mentioned briefly. What would you say are the most important preoccupations of the administration in bolstering the relationship, the strategic relationship with Turkey, but also in trying to answer some of Turkey's own security concerns about the troubled regions it finds itself in. Mm. I, Turkey is, is certainly a very important partner. It's a NATO ally. There's continued concerns about the security of Turkey, particularly along its, its southern border. Um, so doing everything we can, both bilaterally and also with NATO as alliance, to give Turkey the necessary reassurance about the protection of its sovereignty, its territorial integrity, especially vis-a-vis -vis what's happening um, south of its, its border. Um, we are concerned about the conflict between Turkey and the PKK. I Certainly, as you said, given the large amount of violence within the region, the last thing we need to have is, is more violence within Turkey's borders itself. Uh, Turkey has been the unfortunate victim of several terrorist attacks over the last couple of months, which is, is quite concerning, um, and also continuing to work closely with Turkey and our other allies to try and find a diplomatic solution to end the war in, in Syria. Uh, at the same time, Turkey, as with a lot of the rest of Europe, is dealing with the consequences of the conflict in Syria and elsewhere in the region in terms of the significant refugee and migration flow that's that's coming through through Turkey. So many, many challenges both within Turkey's border and also as it's trying to respond to a lot of the chaos on, on its borders as well. If you had a clean sheet of, pa sheet of paper, which I acknowledge you don't have, but if you did have a clean sheet of paper, what would you want the Europeans to do to support American policies in the region. What do you think the Europeans are doing and where do you think there could be a greater European contribution? I think 
everybody needs to work together to address the conflict in, in Syria. Uh, we have a large number of European countries, including the EU, participating in the International Support Group for Syria, which is an important track to try and find a diplomatic solution to what's happening in, in Syria. I think in, in recent months we've seen more efforts on the part of various European countries to participate in the military fight against ISIS. Uh, European countries have been active in terms of dealing with uh, foreign fighter flows, with trying to cut off the, the finances of ISIL. I think there's probably more that European countries could do in terms of the military contributions, but we're starting to, to see more. And then, of course, there's the situation with the, the refugees in Syria, which is an unfortunate byproduct of all of the violence, both by the regime and, and by ISIS in, in, in Syria. No, there's a lot of conversations here, a lot of conversations with Turkey, and a lot of conversations with Washington about how we can continue to, to address that. And until we're able to get a lasting peace in, in Syria, uh, the refugee crisis is something that we're going to have to deal with. And it's, it's something like the foreign fighter problem that's going to need to be dealt with on a more holistic and, and regional basis because it is, it is something in one way or another that's, that's affecting multiple countries. Finally, let me turn the question around a bit. There are people, voices in, in, in Europe, and you've heard them in London during your stay now, uh, that suggest that the Americans have not given a very clear idea of what they want. Uh, they, they might have been more explicit about how they see NATO contributing to any kind of process in the Eastern Mediterranean, that they have been less than explicit of how they want to deal with the Russians, for instance. Would you accept some of this criticism or would you refute it? I think the U.S. has, has certainly been working very, very hard over the last couple of years with, with the U.K., with our European partners, both in terms of pulling together a coalition to fight ISIS. I think we have over 65, 66 members now in this international coalition that, as I mentioned, is working across multiple lines of efforts to try and defeat and ultimately destroy ISIS. And also Secretary Kerry has been very active uh, in, on the diplomatic front in terms of trying to find a negotiated solution to the, the situation in, in Syria. So certainly Certainly there's multiple actors involved, there's multiple complex and, and competing challenges, uh, but I think the U.S. has been doing everything it can across both the diplomatic and the military space on a bilateral basis and also in coalition with our European and other Arab regional partners to address all of these complicated situations on the ground. And you don't expect any slackening of this as the current administration winds down towards, towards the end of its term? I, no, I think if, if anything, there's, there's increased urgency. I think there's, there's every desire to try and leave the region in the, the, the most stable and, and, and strongest position that we possibly can before handing over to a new administration, no matter which political complexion it is. Dr. Sloat, thank you very much. Thank you.